Hi everybody, this time I thought that it's good to not have a theoretical video with a lot of tips and techniques, how photography works, but just a very simple, for fun, exposition of some nice photos. And I'm gonna give you a flavor of a country I've been touring the last two decades or so, which is the Netherlands, a country which falls half of it below the water level, so it could be quite flooded. So it could be that people had to go to their work or house or supermarket like this, but not everybody likes that. So already quite some time ago, the people of the Netherlands started making everything dry and making these impressive constructions to keep the water out, especially the sea. When it storms, a lot of water can come over and even big cities like the city of Rijmerswaal, the Dutch Atlantis have disappeared under the water. So you have these amazing floodgates that can be uh, turned on and turned off because the Dutch also didn't want to interfere with the ecosystem. So they wanted to have the same fresh water or salt water animals living on either side. So that's an added complexity. Of course, the cities need to be protected by the dikes. So maybe you built your house on the right level, but then the water came higher and the dike had to be raised again, and then you had to take the stairs. Of course, dikes can be very nice places to have a pub. Here's the water, here's the city below. Again, stairs, the last level, even deeper down. Dikes, dikes. But with everything taken care of, it is still a country where there's lots of water. You can either follow the dike or go in the orthogonal direction, which means you have to be a good swimmer. Of course, the dikes are also good for grazing your sheep. Another thing with what they did is they built their churches on a hill so that at least when it flooded, they could all hide in the church called the turp. And of course, water can be defensive. You can make fortifications with it, like here or here. And if you're a little bit scared kind of person, then you can have your pleasure boat right under the tree cannons and then you protect. So there's still lots of water everywhere and bridges. It looks like a little bit these kind of ribbons of land sometimes in between the sea. And the land can still flood and then suddenly something that was a forest is now a lake. Or you may have your beautiful castle, but you may not leave every day you wish if the castle has been surrounded by flooded uh, fields. So Holland known for the windmills but also for basking a little bit in the sun in your little boat. And even the cows, they're not very far from the water in case they're thirsty. Or let's say some of the cows managed to get extra conditions that they have a beach holiday every now and then. And of course, water birds. This is the real swan leg. So people are living quite close to the water in many parts of the country, which creates interesting environments. Water in your backyard, water is your view. In fact, where does your garden end? It's where the water starts. The church near the water. Also the cities, of course, they have rivers everywhere. Even if your boat is low enough, you can sail under the town hall in some places, or like here, under the houses. This woman is meeting her friends or parents or whatever, a chat across the moat. Maybe if they're nice, they will lower the drawbridge. And people have their private bridge, like here, in case you always wanted to owe your own bridge, then this one is for sale.
so just go buy it. And you can even park your car, of course only if it's the typical orange Dutch car you can park on the little bridge, not if you drive a big truck. More houses, they have direct access to the river for a swim, these kind of bungalow houses, even the place selling the fries at the end of the pier where the land ends and the water begins. If you're thirsty with your fries, just take a sip of water. And instead of a car, maybe it's good to have your little boat. Everywhere people have a boat. He has a boat, the neighbor across has a boat, you either have a boat or maybe a floating terrace, then you don't have room for the boat, but okay. You get these little harbors, even in small villages, looks like little Venice. You can come to the restaurant by boat or to the pub. I don't know where they are going. Maybe for a nightly stroll by boat, who knows. Instead of a garage, you just build a little dock and then you can have a somewhat bigger boat. And if you don't have your boat garage, yeah, then you have to park your tiny little boat between the big boys. This guy combined the best of both worlds. He made his boat in the shape of a Dutch clock. And if you really don't have much money for a boat, just buy a 10 euro or 10 dollar one in the supermarket, an inflatable one, and that's also okay. Of course, neighbors can chat on their boat. Of course, you're also allowed to have a car, but mind you, then you shouldn't come home too drunk when you park it, otherwise you may find it becomes a boat again. And a lot of people even live in boats. This used to be a problem that there was not enough houses available. And nowadays it's interesting for taxes or other interesting reasons. They even have all amenities, electricity and whatever. So you see that in certain places you have two rows of houses, the normal houses and the boat houses. And the boat houses usually have the number of the normal house with a letter appended to it. Here this starts looking like a real house on the water. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere you can build your house. No garden with a houseboat, no problem. Just put another boat beside us and you can put a garden on that. Here even the children can play on the boat. I wonder how much times they make the swing go a little bit too high and they end up in the water here. And of course even if you live on a boat, make sure you have your tiny little boat to go shopping. There's of course a lot of specific water infrastructure when you live in a watery country. Like these typical bridges we know from Vincent van Gogh. Here we have another one. People have to wait. Here we have another one. This one is so rare that it doesn't even have its own uh, traffic sign. You don't have this cantilever bridge, but it's an elevator bridge which goes up and down. Here again, people getting out in the lock, waiting. And the locks are also sometimes quite interesting because they have a road at the front and a road at the back, and then the road can close again. So when this one is open, people are just using the other road at the back. And when the other one needs to open, they close this one, and you don't even have to wait. Except when you're a boat. Here's another one. And here's a more impressive one for the big ships between one part, uh, the freshwater part and the saltwater part. Or, if there's no bridge or anything in the vicinity, maybe you have to use these little boats. Traffic signs for boats. This is even a floating petrol station for boats. You just sail by here, take your petrol, if the water goes down, this goes down, if the water goes up, this goes up. And harbors, harbors everywhere, harbors with windmills, old, nice, cozy harbors, hundreds of years old, like this one, or this one. Other ones, more modern, we still have harbors. They get ever more modern, and the big ones like here. And even in a small town where you don't have a harbor, just park your boats and make your own harbor. 
by the side of the road, uh, sorry, the side of the river. And you sail out your harbor. Of course, you can work with the water. The port of Rotterdam used to be one of the biggest harbors in the world. Now some of the Chinese harbors have become big, but it's still one of the biggest. You also see lots of uh, business traffic on the rivers everywhere. And of course you have even in little towns or villages a shipyard to repair some of the boats. Or here you can have a couple of these fisher boats because fishing is of course still an important thing. Maybe not as important as it used to be but it's quite important still for the Dutch who go out fishing. The seagulls of course also go fishing. And then you see that you uh, you can do a 180 degree turn into your parking space. You have to be able to be a very good sailor to do that. Another way to make a living is cultivate oysters. Or mussels are also very popular, but oysters bring in more money. Leisure on the water. Also leisure on the water happens, obviously. So sailing is one of the popular ones, or on the open sea, or here, just sit in the boat, bask in the sun, or canoeing, kayaking. And if you don't want to do it in nature, just do it in the city. In the middle of city, nobody cares. It's all fine. The Dutch are liberal people. Lots of uh, freedom. It can become crowded, of course, with all these boats, like here in uh, Amsterdam just avoiding uh, a big bang or in the evening hours you just take your uh, jet ski for a little stroll or just jump in the water anyway. Of course you have to be careful if you're uh, sailing a boat because you don't want to hear bop 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 the heads of the swimmers, mind the heads of the swimmers please. Here we have a professional swimming contest they just swim the canals of Amsterdam. Or you just take a beer by the river. That's also nice. Or even a barbecue. You find some alley looking out on the river and uh, bring your own barbecue. Even these girls having a simple chat are in relationship with the maritime, uh, with, the, with the water uh, economy, the standing in the shade of these uh, sand containers. Speaking of sand, of course there's a lot of beach if you're living near the sea. Like here, you can do some other interesting leisure activities on the beach. Getting your horse and driving in the sea, riding in the sea, seems to be an interesting uh, pastime for some. And the Netherlands is not a big country and there's not so few people, so sometimes it's a bit crowded and then uh, you can go to work straight from the beach or maybe straight to the beach from work if you live in this chemical, work in this chemical plant. Typical high-rise buildings near the beach and uh, uh, Navy Heroes, also a good resting place for the pigeons or the seagulls in fact. So we go now in the more nightly looks of the uh, Netherlands watery environment, which means that we came, that we come now to the second part. We talked about the sea, we see here the sea, we see an internal sea, we see islands, and we see here things which interlock kind of like fingers with the sea. That's called sea land, because the land is in the sea. It was here also where that entire city uh, disappeared. And we'll have a look of that province and when I get the time, if you like it, we will. I will make some more uh, videos for you about the other interesting provinces and things about the Netherlands. Typically small villages, sea land, uh, there's a lot of sea, a little bit of land, isolated, not so many people living there. They have these cozy small villages with the famous black barns, also some nice houses, the old pump. This is one of the smallest villages in the Netherlands, 
competing with a couple of other ones, smaller city even, I think it's a city officially. And again, the sea and these almost castle looking churches. In this little village, this, this is the bookshop. Huh? It's so small you just put some books in, uh, in suitcases and uh, pick it and throw the money here in the mail slot. What's typical in these uh, Zeeland uh, Sealand, uh, villages is that they are constructed around the church. So there's a famous Dutch saying, if you make a very short walk or drive, you have a round around the church. Here again, another village. And you have, of course, some interesting old cities. For example, Vere. It's an interesting uh, city. Beautiful buildings. Again, water is always close by. Not everybody has a boat, but many. Here, Middelburg. It's the capital of Zeeland. Nice small streets you have. Zierikzee, another quite interesting city on another one of the Finger Islands, which are now somewhat connected, so they have become a little bit half island. This guy sells a very famous uh, Zeeland delicacy, uh, a candy, a sweet, and it's called Zeeland Turts because it has the shape of a <laughs> turt which <laughs> turned right out of you know where. Anchors in the city. Again, bridges. One of the gates of Sirixi. Sluis, another one of the famous uh, cities popular with the neighbors from the country Belgium for doing some shopping. Vriesingen. And that's it for now. So if you like it, um, tell your friends via Facebook or whatever. The keywords are Meneer Photo Professor. For this specific one, the Netherlands Digital Photo Expo and Sealand. And uh, I'll see you the next time for again just a fun video or a very interesting course about color or whatever. Bye guys, see you.